Hi and welcome to another video. In this quick video we're just going to review the new update that's just been released by Asus on the 21st of May. Um, so this is the new version of firmware ending in uh, 43129. As you can see it comes in around 66 megabytes. Um, so it's not a huge update but it has got five very important uh, fixes in there and uh, vulnerabilities have been fixed as well so that's always good for the security and as usual as I said before it's good to see Asus are on the ball and actually updating with all the latest vulnerabilities that are coming out and protecting our network and Wi-Fi as well so that's really good to see so as you can see in the first uh, point they're actually making is they fixed the frag attack vulnerability. So this is a new vulnerability that's just come out. Um, it's around a new set uh, basically of uh, vulnerabilities around fragmentation and aggregation attacks. Uh, so mostly in how Wi-Fi connected devices handle data packets and more particularly in how they handle fragments and frames of data packets. Uh, so what this researcher has found is that these vulnerabilities have actually existed since 1997, so it's a long time. Um, and also he's discovered that this Wi-Fi security um, vulnerabilities also affects the latest WPA3 specification as, as well as the older WPA2. Um, so that's a bit concerning when you can see these ones here. But again, you have to take these into context where you know how it, how are these people going to actually uh, actually attack you and things like that. So as we go on, we can see here that about the two, the vulnerabilities. So basically these vulnerabilities can be grouped into two groups. There's the device specific flaws and then there's the design flaws in the Wi-Fi feature that handles the packets or frames. Uh, so the first ones around the design specific flaws that's like some Wi-Fi devices that can accept an unencrypted frame even when connected to a, a protected Wi-Fi network. So even an encrypted Wi-Fi network they are still accepting unencrypted frames. Um, then there's other devices that are certain devices that will accept plain text. That means like you can read it open um, and uh, aggregated frames um, that look like handshake messages. Um, and then thirdly, the worst is like some devices accept broadcast fragments. So even when sent unencrypted, so even when you're connected to a WPA2, WPA3 network and you're thinking you're secure, it's, everything is encrypted, these things are not. The next category is around design flaw in the actual Wi-Fi feature that handles these frames. So the first thing is around the frame aggregation feature of Wi-Fi. It basically there's a flag that is not authenticated and can be modified by if this hacker or person uses this vulnerability. Another design flaw in the frame fragmentation feature of Wi-Fi. So basically receivers are not rece required to check whether every fragment that belongs to the same frame is encrypted with the same key. So it will basically they will reassemble the fragments that weren't decrypted using different keys. So except different keys, so you would think if you're sending something encrypted, it would be just that one security key that's going, but this will accept something else that's been injected. Um, and then lastly, the design flaw is also in Wi-Fi frames, the fragmentation um, feature. When a client disconnects from the network, the Wi-Fi device is still not required to remove the non-reassembled fragments from memory. So basically what all this means is that there's he's found that, that these fragments are actually accepting unencrypted um, data packets in there and people can take vulnerable um, vulnerability of this and actually do something. So the mitigation around this is to mitigate the attacks is basically around the routers NAT um, you might have heard of um, and then their firewall is bypassed and de devices are directly attacked. Um, so all your devices will need to be updated um, so of course un unfortunately quite a lot of devices like your IoT devices small ones like if you've got things like I bought you know cheaper things that like non-branded uh, power plugs and then Wi-Fi bulbs or Bluetooth bulbs and things like that um, 
that connect by Wi-Fi, um, they'll probably never get an update for this. Um, but you've got some mitigating here is that the actual router's actually been updated as well. And hopefully this is where sometimes it does pay a little bit extra um, to go with a brand, um, a big brand, where they're hopefully they're, they'll um, produce these updates and everything else to keep you more secure. So basically there is also a tool that I believe the researcher who found this vulnerability um, on their website you can actually download and ha you can basically have a, a demo of the tool and everything else so you can see how it works if you're interested and I can put a link into that. So again it's good that they've actually uh, fixed this um, vulnerability um, as it seems to be quite as we said it's been going on uh, since 1997 and also affects the new WPA3 so it's good to see that they've uh, they basically redone this one as well, so that's really good to see. Uh, next is the they fixed a uh, den denial of service or a DOS vulnerability. So that's the uh, another contributor has actually a third party at university has actually found this and uh, reported it to ASUS as well, and ASUS has acted on this. So it's good to see again ASUS is taking not just ignoring other people's actual information that they're sending to them and just deciding well you know it's not going to be a big problem they're actually going out and fixing it um, so that's really good uh, thirdly you improved system stability so i think the last update was a um, like a test uh, beta version um, so you can ha have a look at that um, so it's stable as well they fixed some gui so that's the user interface you can see on the right hand side here so you can see all of these around here so there must have been some bugs in here sometimes when you refresh it doesn't some of the buttons didn't show up and things like that so they've fixed some of those and then lastly they've fixed these these updates here um, as you can see around here these CVEs so I think we went through these um, in the previous version uh, that they did have so you can have a look here and you can see in the beta version here um, they, they were putting these updates but this was uh, only a test version or the beta version um, so it wasn't stable so this now includes that so basically these ones were many vulnerabilities again you can see all of them listed here basically all of these were around something called a DNS mask um, so basically it's a lightweight DNS and DHCP server software so your DNS is like it transfers your you got Cloudflare and the Google um, so you can go there so you could basically your DNS is going to change your your IP address into what you see as www dot something and your DHCP server gives all your it sits on the router and this will gives the IP, internal IP addresses um, to all your devices that connect to the router so basically this software is like I think it's free software as well um, so a lot of these uh, routers and companies use it of course and um, what well, it runs on a small run on Linux BSDs Android and Mac OS and is included in most Linux uh, distributions and then gadgets and things like that that connect to the internet so this actual main software a lot of computers have used they've actually found the vulnerability in this actual software so this is just asus using this other lightweight um, software and everything else for it so basically what these vulnerabilities are there was a flaw that was found in the dns um, server software um, and then basically what it's around is a heat based buffer overflow uh, was discovered so this is basically where an attack on the network who can forge the dns replies such as that they are accepted as valid um, and then basically you could use this floor to cause a buffer overflow and then a data in a heap memory segment possibly executing code on the machine um, so basically all of this means is that they could interrupt your dns queries that you're thinking going to another website and then inject data as usual into something and then basically execute code back onto your machine and of course launch viruses and then uh, ransomware and things like bad things like that so again this covered quite a few as you can see here there's a lot of CVEs so each one of these represents a vulnerability that's been um, distinguished and everything else and identified um, and again uh, ASUS has covered this already and as you can see as soon as this came out um, back in February ASUS released this test software straight away 
so you could update your your router to um, be protected so it's good to see that they really are protecting us and again you can see back in 2020 when we had the call stranger vulnerability as well they updated it straight away as well as soon as available so it's good to see that you know all these updates you can see are, are constantly going through and we're getting um, on the router um, I'm not too sure about the frag attack vulnerability um, has been updated for Merlin yet I, I think um, I, well, from my understanding it's not yet but I'm sure it will do um, but yeah so it's good to see that th these are all being updated and uh, everything is here so this is a quick video just to go through the new um, update and I'd just like to thank uh, Rodney, um, one of my subscribers and then who commented to let us know that there's the new update software that's out for the firmware. Again, if you have any questions or any comments, then just leave them uh, and I'll try and answer them. Thanks for watching and have a great day.